officer. How's the investigation going? Ah, uh, I see. You must be the traveler that Lady Farina mentioned. Listen, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'd avoid getting mixed up in this whirlpool of a mess if I were you. Huh? What do you mean? Come with me and you'll see. The deceased is one of Linny's assistants named Cal. Even though he hadn't joined the troop long, he was hardworking <laughs> and everyone yeah, generally a liked him. Outline of him. The assistants are usually in charge of setting up and inspecting the props, as well as assisting with the show and keeping the crowd engaged. As you probably saw when you were in the audience, the water tank suddenly fell and smashed the box with cowl inside it. This is the real mystery. We've already searched the scene and were unable to find any traces but of I want to know about Cal. However, if you look carefully, the box was positioned directly under the water tank. The ropes holding the tank were then burned by the pyrotechnics on stage, causing them to snap. All these factors lining up so perfectly makes it hard to see this as a mere accident. If anything, the more logical explanation is that the whole incident was intentionally planned, and Linny is the most likely person to have access to all these areas. But he doesn't have a motive! Are you both good friends of his? We know him for 24 well, hours, or 48 hours. We can't say we're good friends, but we've known each other for a little while. So in just a short time, he was not only able to win your trust, but even convince you to act as his attorneys. I know there's no such thing as magic. The real trick of a magician is holding the audience in the palm of their hand. I've seen a lot of cases, and I can tell you that people are the least reliable kind of evidence. Yeah. I agree. Sorry, I <laughs> tend to be pretty straightforward. Can I not agree with Just them? Just <laughs> know that I'm warning you for your own good. Anyway, you may investigate the scene of the crime yourselves if you're curious. Who knows, maybe you'll be able to come up with some new evidence. Go ahead, have a look around. So this is the rope that broke and caused the water tank to fall. Hmm, the rope looks pretty durable. How can it be burned through so quickly by fireworks? Hmm? Why are you suddenly so serious, Traveler? Away, but there's still a little bit of it left. Huh. So if a rope meant to hold something was made with that kind of material. Wait, why would you write a. Maurice. Hello there. What are you investigating? Hmm. Oh. This location has also been cordoned off because the Magic Troop members are currently considered prime suspects. The investigation team is still collecting evidence. The seats were all booked in advance, so we were able to deduce the missing woman's identity by checking the guest list. Sure, it's not like this is confidential information. We will publish Shouldn't it, it be later confidential anyway information? when we petition the public to help us find the missing person. I'm sure, sure that part makes sense. She's a painter from Fontaine who's made a bit of a name for herself. Apparently, she wasn't a regular at the Opera House, but she'd been feeling some pressure with her work lately, which made her decide to come see the Magic Show. The Magic Troop members all claim not to know her. We have looked into her social connections. It seems that she has no personal grievances or conflicts of interest with the suspects. You guys are pretty fast. Simply put, she wasn't related to the Magic Troop at all, which matches the features of the previous serial disappearances. Hmm. Were the victims of previous cases also chosen at random? That's how it seems to us, in any case. Apart from the fact that they were all young women of around the same age range, there really weren't any other connections between them. <sighs> okay, then. No need to be so formal. If you do happen to see the missing girl, 
Please be sure to con. It is of utmost importance that we get to the bottom of these disappearances. You look exactly like Paimon. The investigation team has some new findings. Turns out there's an issue with the random number selector after all. See, I told you. What if the machine picked some big guy's seat? You think the murderer would have still made his move then? Sorry to interrupt, but we're helping Lenny and Lynette with their side of the investigation. What were you saying about the number selector? There's something wrong with it? You're trying to help them? <laughs> That'll be a tall order. Lenny used the machine to pick a random member of the audience during his performance, right? The lucky girl that later disappeared. Well, we thought there might be a serious problem with the machine, so we had it taken away for further inspection. It turns out that the seat number it picked wasn't random at all. The machine picks that same number every time. I'm sure you already know that you have to make a reservation in advance to get a seat, regardless of whether it's a trial or some performance. In other words, Linny knew who would be sitting where from the very beginning. Hmm. That much checks out. Lenny reserved our seats for us, too. Let you see why I was saying it'd be tough to make a case for Lenny. Hmm. Even though it's bad for Lenny's case, Paimon had better write it down. I see that you're investigating the area. Well, it just so happens that I'm interested too. If you find any new and interesting leads, be sure to share them with me, all right? Why? We don't have too many thoughts yet. <laughs> then why don't I tell you my hypothesis first? The way I sure. see it. The thud? Oh, you mean the sound that happened during the countdown? Yes, exactly. It wasn't terribly loud. And I suspect that most people heard it. It's just that everyone was awaiting the results of Lenny's trick with bated breath. So no one paid it much mind. But now that the incident has happened, the thud has become an important clue. Hmm. That makes sense. So what do you make of it? I'm of the opinion that it may have been the sound of Lenny's accomplice. Lynette, perhaps. Jumping atop the water tank or something like that. And when the pyrotechnics went off, she cut the rope. Sending the water tank crashing down. But wasn't the noise we heard too loud for that? Perhaps the balance wasn't right, leading to a particularly rough landing. Oh, that's true. Hmm. I suppose I must reconsider. Hmm. That does remind Paimon, though. What was with that sound? Lenny's still talking to the guards. It seems he'll have a lot of explaining to do. I think someone will be assigned to monitor us later, but that's all right.
get something new? Whoever the murderer was, this rope people needed to. Why would it be? Gosh, we all. And you start climbing? I can't climb. Uh, I can go outside and around. For a while now. Huh? <laughs> you mean us? That's right. If I'm not mistaken, you're also among those who wish to cut down the thorns and pursue the truth. No? And by the looks of it, you're not from Fontaine. Well, you're right on the more about that one, but who are you? Have you never heard of the Spina di Rosula? No. From mediating disputes and providing protection to solving conundrums, you name it, Spina di Rosula does it. And I, Navia, have the honor of being its renowned president. Though those who play by our rules call me boss. I'm Silver, her attendant. Pleased to meet you. And I'm Melus. Demoiselle's various daily needs and affairs are under my purview. Huh? Boss? Demoiselle? What gives with the names? <clears throat> well, I am the second generation president. Malus and the others are still used to my previous title. My apologies, Demoiselle. Should you prefer, boss, I will endeavor to use that instead. No, no need. You don't have to call me boss. Just Navia is fine. Okay, if you say so. Not that we're members of Spina di Rasula anyway. <laughs> All merely trifling details. Never mind. Now, back to the situation at hand. That's right. I've always kept an eye on the serial disappearance cases. My interest stems from a matter back from my father's time. Judging from the look of things, I find Linny an unlikely mastermind. Really? We think so too! That's why we're looking for clues now! But, how did you come to that conclusion? Intuition, naturally. My unparalleled intuition. Farina sure was quick to point the finger at Linny without any decisive evidence whatsoever, wasn't she? But, that's not uncommon for her. If you remember, the Justice had to interrupt her and ask if she was pressing charges just to keep her from getting carried away. Anyway, a trial begins the moment someone levels charges. 
And, of course, there was no way Farina was going to back down in that situation. Sounds more like you just don't trust the Hydro Archon. <laughs> she well, is very impulsive. What's your opinion? I must admit that she can be interesting at times. But liking her doesn't mean that I'll blindly agree with her. Alright, I've answered your question. Now, it's time you answer mine. But she got stars in her eyes. Wait a minute, did that answer count? Well, I say it does. But don't worry, you won't hear any pointless questions from me. In your opinion, do you think it's right to treat a trial like it's an opera? Um, well? And why would that be? <laughs> See, Silver and Malouse? I told you they'd be different. Most astute of you, demoiselle. I, too, think that the Traveler's response was most excellent. No matter how wonderful the script or how fervent the audience's expectations may be, uh. the trials that go on stage here must be based in fact. And if that can be done, boss, then... All right, that's quite enough, Malouse. Anyway, I like your answer. You pass mm. with flying colors. <laughs> now... I need to make some preparations, following which our joint investigation shall commence. You two shall be my assistants. Wait! Since when did we become assistants? Mm hmm Oh, uh, well, I can be the assistant. Sure. Or your companion, if you like. I'm really not that fussy. Hm. That's more like it. Far be it from me to brag, but... I believe that Demoiselle's intuition will be instrumental in uncovering the truth. You wish to save a friend from false accusations, and we wish to unravel the disappearances. In this sense, our goals are aligned. Hmm. You have a point. Huh. Like this missing girl's You're case is counter, quite missing? vague. And what about you over there? What do you think? You seem like you've got something on your mind. I have nothing to add. Oh, alrighty then. We'll be making some preparations first. Uh, just be sure to let us know if they start revealing Linny's tricks. <laughs> Thanks! No one can freely enter or exit the Opera House at the moment. If you wish to leave, you must register your identity with us first. Uh, no, we're not leaving. We're representing Linny and Lynette as attorneys, so we're investigating the case. Were you always guarding this entrance? Yes. After the Chief Justice gave the order, everyone coming in or out must undergo a strict inspection. So, the missing girl couldn't have left from here. At least, not from that point on. I doubt there was much opportunity then, either. How can you be so sure, hmm? Well, because I was in charge of security near the entrance at that time, I couldn't see Linny's performance from here, which was quite a shame. Just my luck. But still, not sure I as long as just abandoned like... my post, and I stayed put no matter how loud the applause was. If someone had so much as even approached the door, I would have noticed it. Let alone if they had tried to leave. We Melazines are good at that sort of thing, you know. So, it's safe to say the girl couldn't have left through here. Alright, thank you for your help. This will be useful info. We've checked everything of note here at the performance venue. Hmm. Paimon wonders how Linny's discussion with the guards is going. Let's go see, shall we? Ooh, things are getting interesting, huh? We're about to see how magic is made. Finally got up to that point. I'm gonna take my way 
take away my ability to 